your number one seed in the NFC. And as a reminder, it should go without saying, but I'll say it to you anyway, because I'm a class act. I'll give you the reminder if you're just jumping into football season and you've been away for a little while. Because you have the number one seed does not mean you're the best team in the conference. It means you have the best record. Now, with that come certain advantages or the advantage, everything runs through your town and you only have to play two playoff games, not three if things go the right way for you. With all that being said, the number one seed in the NFC in 2024 is the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk Cousins, you like that. Falcons fans, you like that. I'll see if I like it. I intend to be in the building to watch that. They're playing host to Russ Wilson and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I really like um, what Kirk is going to provide. I get the headlines generally in Cynical USA um, are always about his inability to shine when the lights are hottest. That means January. That means prime time. All of that. Overall, though, he has uh, he has been a real good quarterback. Every stop he's made over the last uh, few years, I suspect that he is really going to be able to take better advantage than anyone did the last couple of years. I'm talking about Kyle Pitts and there's B. John Robinson. And the only thing I can't help but think the way my brain works is. Boy, imagine this offense if they had Roma Dunze in it. The Michael Penix thing is a matter for another day. I keep going back and forth what the intent is here. If you asked me three months ago, and even if you didn't, I told you, I suspect it's going to be one and done for Kirk. They'll try to move him to a team that is Super Bowl ready and thinks that maybe the missing piece is a QB. They'll go get him, and then they'll flip to Michael Penix. However, he can erase that if he wins the division and maybe wins a playoff game, it would be hard to move on from the incumbent Kirk Cousins at that point. Either way, um, toughest stretch of the whole season. This is the major reason I'm taking the Falcons over the heavyweights of the conference. Toughest stretch of the whole season. Right out of the gate. They host Pittsburgh at Philly, KC. Those are their first three games. If they're just one and two, the future is bright. If they're two and one, look out. Oh, and three, now there are going to be some questions and some tumult and otherwise. But if they can just get one of those first three, um, the future will be bright. You know about Justin Simmons and Jesse Bates and Matthew Judon and A.J. Terrell and Grady Jarrett. The defense is good. The offensive line is a strength. Two-team exacta is the way to play this one, I think, to your greatest advantage in the NFC South. Falcons, if you buy that they're going to win the division, are one and the Bucks too. That pays out at plus two seventy five. Pretty juicy stuff for um, a a situation that I think is kind of hard to push back on. I don't like the Saints. The Panthers may rise up, but how far do you anticipate them to improve themselves year to year? I mean, I think that's a great bet. Anyway, Kevin Hench, I have long windedly given you my number one seed for the NFC. How say you? Um, I, I like your one seed. I'll be getting to them in a moment. Um, I'm, as you know, as our listeners know, I'm, I'm all in on the lions in many different ways. I, I have, I have them at 14 to one to win the Super Bowl. I have them, um, to be the one seed. I have them to finish first in a lions, Packers, bears, Vikings, exact the box. Um, you know, I actually, I'm tempted Goff MVP, except that they love to pound it inside the five. So he he won't get the huge TD totals. Uh, but, you know, that schedule with so many games on the fast track. And let's face it, you know, I, the Niners didn't do anything when Josh Reynolds dropped the ball. Like that game was over. That game was over when Josh Reynolds dropped the ball. Then he dropped another one when the game wasn't quite over. But like, you know, guys dropping the ball. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, Patriot, the, the Patriot run, like a lot of that kind of thing uh, uh, helping you out. But but the Lions obviously had the had the Niners whipped and then and then things went south fast. Uh, I, I like them this year. I, I just think, you know, it, it, it's, it's similar for the Falcons, actually. But like when you when the two teams come to the line of scrimmage, you know, and it's it's Gibbs and it's Williams and it's St. Brown and it's Laporta. It's like, well, someone's got a great match. You you can't double everybody. And, you know, it's like Gibbs in the flat, Williams on a fly pattern, uh, St. Brown underneath, Laporta shedding his guy. I just, 
it's it's hard to see a lot of three and outs for the Lions. Like I just I think they're loaded. Well, let me just say, I don't mean to interrupt you, but your point about the fast track, and a lot of people have pointed to that. And obviously, Jared Goff can whip it around real good in Ben Johnson's offense. I am, as I have said recurringly, um, Ben Johnson and Jared Goff are the number one tandem that um, sort of proves my hypothesis that. In a lot of NFL situations, the coordinator is more important more important than the guy at the trigger. The only thing is, the defense is the issue in Detroit, right? And I think if things are going the right way for them, Aiden Hutchinson and company elevate the pieces on the back end are improved, at least, I think, from year to year. And I think Aiden Hutchinson elevates a little bit more. And so if, if they have a lead and Aiden Hutchinson's chasing your uh, QB around, that's not a great spot for you. The only thing is... um. So they're in a dome and I bellyache spiritually about any NFC North team and AFC North team too. What are you doing doming yourself? That's your home field advantage. And now more than ever, they, the the Lions have the offensive line. They have, uh, they have uh, vaulted past in the NFC. The Eagles as having the best offensive line. And they now have these two runners. They're wired to, to beat the hell out of you. And that's what you want to do in November and December and January. And they're, they're a fancy pants sling it all over the field team. That's my only concern with how the Lions have, have uh, on purpose wired themselves now that they play under that uh, fancy pants dome. But anyway, I, I am with you largely about the Lions. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Back to your no, thoughts. No, no. Uh, and, and so then I'll, because I think this is what we did last week, I'll do my two. Okay. And then you'll go. Okay. All right. So, so I uh, agree with everything you said about the Falcons. Um, you know, the Adunze thing, obviously we were shocked on draft night, but I don't think uh, come week 10 of the season, we're going to be like, oh, the Falcons aren't scoring enough points. I think, I think that it's, it's very similar in that, you know, pick your poison with, with Bijan London. And I would add pits to that, you know, Pitts has played with some bad quarterbacks and he's still a monster. And I do think that, that cousins is, is going to unlock him a little bit. So I don't think the Falcons are going to have any trouble scoring points. And then, as you mentioned, you know, the Judon Bates Simmons upgrade, uh, that's massive. And then most importantly, they're the only team from that division that's going to the playoffs. So uh, I, I like them neck and neck with the lions to the finish line for that one seed, but I, I have them getting edged and and coming in at the two seed. Man, speaking of edge, I thought I was so edgy by going Falcons one. And then you undermine me by putting the Falcons as your two seed. All right. That's fine. I listen, we park our cars in the same garage. Um, and as far as that goes, we'll flip flop here. I'm going with the Detroit lions as my second seed here. I think the best way to play this is, is just go straight forward. Plus one fifteen to win the NFC North plus money to go under 10 and a half. I'm avoiding that. Um, it's really an interesting thing. You know, who knows how different teams are going to react. Um, the, the individuals, the human beings, under those helmets and on the sidelines, you know, obviously coming close and just short can destroy a franchise as it did the Seattle Seahawks a decade or so ago against your Patriots. And then other teams when the, like the Pittsburgh Steelers, when they were 15 and one and they lost to the Patriots in that title game, it was a gut punch. And they said, no, we got to run it back. We got to make this right for the bus and beyond. And so they did. Um, it's interesting that Ben Johnson, the spiritual move of I could go be a head coach somewhere else, but I'm staying here in Detroit where uh, where I know things are good. I wonder what that does for morale. Obviously, it boosts it. Um, I also think that there's an interesting fallback in the reality of pro football in, in this millennium. QBs get hurt. And I'm intrigued by Hendon Hooker. The fact that they took Hendon Hooker when they did, the way he looked in preseason, I know don't react to preseason. I never do. But I do think that the guy has um, an extra layer that Goff doesn't have, which is running the ball. So even if Goff were to sort of flame out or get hurt, I kind of like how Detroit's positioned in that regard versus some of the other NFC contenders there. So, okay, there's my two seed. You ready for another shocker here? Here we go. Number three, Dave. Get the, you remember, did you ever at grade school, did you ever have to um, wipe the chalkboard clean 
Um, Eddie Spaghetti, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have chalkboards by the time you got to no, school. No, I did. You, had, you, had, I did. Yeah. you did? I did. I did, oh. I did have chalkboards, yeah, up until... No, I think even in high school, some classrooms did have chalkboards, yeah, not not the marker or whiteboard thing. Yeah, I think those stink, those marker ones. This I, those, is those, Dave, those... this is check building anticipation. Okay, drum roll, please. Did you guys ever... Well, I, I will say also, chalkboards? that shock, I'll chalkboard. tell you... You know, everybody likes that, you know, the, the you know, orange blossom trees. That's the number one smell. Um, maybe a burger or a steak on the grill is is on the short list. Fresh cut grass is very nice. There are a lot of good smells. I The weird one I've always loved. I remember in class, I always loved the smell of chalk. That dust coming off the board. I always wanted to lick it. It smelled so good, but I never did because I knew it wouldn't go well. Now. I'm going to erase the chalk from the board. Did a teacher ever ask you, get the white, get wet, wet a wet, wet thing and clean the board. David, please do that for the class. And you do that. That's what I'm doing right now. I know, I know everybody. You go, what? You go drum roll, right. please. And then right. digress so far, Max Weinberg's arms would get tired. Like you, you go, here it is, guys. Orange blossoms, chalkboards. Max Weinberg. Max Weinberg. We need Stuart Cope. I'm going to go Ringo Starr. How much further in the Wayback Machine can you get? All right, here we go, Buddy everybody. I wish, I wish this team would go way back to the good uniforms, not these, not these jive neon uniforms, but your three seed and your NFC West champion is the Los Angeles Rams. I know everybody's in on the Niners. That's the easy way to go. I get that depth is the issue for McBay's squad in 2024. I'm obviously playing for some luck here in that regard. Um, as you'd expect, Aaron Donald goes out. Ewing effect, that's one of my longstanding theories I have, um, but Aaron Donald leaves um, and is replaced by those two Seminoles moving across Football America, Fisky and Verse. Middle of the pack defense overall. I love the melodrama, the potential soap opera of Matthew Stafford and his wife, Kelly, who in this offseason did the podcast talking about what happened at Georgia with the backup QB. So it's delicious that Matthew Stafford's two backup QBs this year are the most handsome man in the history of people, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Stetson Bennett, who spent 17 years of his life, presumably running through the state of Georgia. Anyway, those are the backups. Not a big factor here. I think you go alt. Here's how much I like the Rams. You go alt season win total. Take it up to nine and a half over the standard eight and a half. Now you got some juice there. Plus 120 is how you do that. You'll thank me later. In the meantime, Rams are your three seed. Your your picks are you're 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 doing the fun bold thing. And and I'm and I wish I were, but I'm I'm going chalk. I, okay. I do think the Niners, I, I, I think we're all feeling a, a regression. You know, you talk about the stomach punch, you know, you lose, you lose the Super Bowl in OT. That's, that's pretty bad. Um, and, and, uh, and we saw it with the Eagles, right? Last year, like maybe there is a, a hangover. Um, but you know what? There always I, is. Not, there always is the closest team to to disproving the 21st century idea that the Super Bowl runner up is doomed is the Bengals. You know, they get that tough, um, you know, push out of bounds on Mahomes and Arrowhead, or else the Bengals would have gone back to back uh, to Super Bowls. Anyway, continue. Uh, amazing, the Chiefs caught a break. Um, so, but I, I, you know, I as I felt myself trying to pick someone else to win that division other than the Niners, what I found myself doing was falling into the trap of Brock Purdy isn't good, and I feel like that trap has swallowed a hundred thousand commenters now. Like, no, 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 he's good. He is good. They're good. Shanahan's good. They're they're not going nine and eight. So I I, I do have a, a super board. I do feel like they're they're going to come back to the pack a little bit, but not enough to uh to 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 not win that division. Brings me to my my four seed, and this is this was it, this is tough. This was a tough one, but uh, I do I do think the Cowboys uh, win win their division. I hmm. I just think. Um, you know, with the Eagles, you know, we're yet to be determined which Eagles team we see this year. And uh, I, I do, I, I don't know, like, I, I know everyone has that 
apocalypse against the Packers at home, fresh in their mind of, of you know, the possibly the worst playoff performance as a home favorite, like a, a shocking uh, a zero turned in by that defense. I'm glad, I'm glad you don't remember what happened in Heinz Field against the Cleveland Browns during COVID. <laughs> Thank true. goodness we have decided on this show that the COVID games only count for half or else That's, that would they, probably they be do. your number one. But, but so, you know, I'm I'm like you were saying about the, your Falcons one seed. It's like, you know, it doesn't mean they're the best team, but like I do, I'm I'm not, I'm not saying Dak's going to lead him to the promised land, but I do think Dak's going to lead him to 11 wins and that's, and that's enough to win that division. Boy, I mean, I, yeah, I hear you on, it, it's not tough to find things to like about America's team here, alleged though they are as America's team. Uh, th- the vibes have been off and you know, it's maybe so much negotiation and uh, I, I don't want to overreact to that. Jerry um, tends to say some things that make you say like that, that. Well, his players say during the negotiation, CeeDee Lamb takes the social media and um, makes some snarky stuff back and all of that. It's not so much about that, but it's where Dak is. And I know he is a high end regular season performer. But at some point, it has to resonate in the locker room, much as it does in the Atlanta Braves situation, as a for instance. By the late 90s, their fan base was like, yeah, yeah, let's uh, let's wrap this regular season up. It's like, it's mid-July, man. Let's like, yeah, but we know we're, we're winning the division. And what we need to do is get over our inability to do something in the postseason. At some point in the locker room, I think they got to be looking around at Dak and Coach McCarthy and all the rest of it and saying like, all right, we're, we're good again. Yeah, we're, yeah okay, we, we're not a bum team. But like, well, is it ever going to change? And as there's maybe some momentum behind that kind of vibe, perpetuating into the actual regular season and everything. I could see them falling back a little bit. The Eagles are not a flawless team themselves. We've covered that ad nauseum here this off season. The number one thing that is somehow ironically the least discussed major issue in pro football from last year to this one, um, despite the fact that he and his brother are constantly in the news. Talk about somebody finally getting a break. Nice for the Kelsey brothers to get over a hundred million dollar podcast deal. Um, that's, uh, that's really nice. Um, but anyway, um, it's because of his largesse as a celebrity. I think to Jason Kelsey's absence from the Eagles is sort of being glossed over like, ah, but he's bigger than a football player. Yeah. But the Eagles still need the hall of fame center to, um, successfully execute the tush push. That's what the old line experts have told me. Guys like Jeff Schwartz say that it, he has a rare ability, did Kelsey, to get super low for a guy that size. And that's what greased the skids for Jalen Hurts and his giant thighs to be able to get that massive push. And in critical downs, to be able to just sort of say, we have something that no none of the other 31 teams has was a major advantage. I don't know that that's going to exist for them. The so thing what you're saying, Jerry, this, this, this is what I understand. What you're saying I, is, I'm while the community, devil's in it, while the community appreciates uh, Jason Kelsey's large S, they're going to miss his large ah. on, the, on the tush push. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. Right. I stepped on your joke. I thought you were going to attack me but, for diminishing the team. Here's they are my four seed. They are winning the <laughs> NFC East, and here's why. I, you know. First of all, I have one more uh, bit of cynicism to sprinkle in here. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah said it after the season on this show um, that Nick Sirianni is there to be the vibes guy. He's not the X's and O's guy. And he's there to be the vibes guy. And the vibes were atrocious last year. So what's he even doing there? Still, it's funny that he almost got fired during the regular season, or at least there was some buzz in Philly for them to fire him. The year in the regular season after he just got to the Super Bowl and just about beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Boy, what have you done for me lately? Um, My concern with the offense and the offensive line specifically is kind of offset because I like that D quite a bit. Two rookie corners offset the absence of James Bradbury, at least Bradbury, at least in the short term news that uh, he's going to have to sit down for a bit there. C.J. Gardner Johnson is back. He was critical two years ago to that team. 
Here's the way I would play it to try and uh, make a little loot off the Eagles. Two-team exacta. Once again, these two-team exactas that you can find. Um, Philly and Dallas. Is anybody going to argue with that one? I, I you know, I kind of like the Giants more than most people do. I like Washington a little more than most people do. And I think that drags the Eagles and Cowboys back a little bit. And that's why I have the champ of this division slotted in the four hole. Plus 130, though. I mean, if you, it, I mean, if you like Dallas over Philly, fine if you like philly over dallas but neither of those bottom feeders are going to jump past those two teams so plus 130 is your payout if you take it and uh now we get to the niners plus money if you take them under 11 um i you, you kind of touched on it there hench the roster you know again we overreact not overreact i mean we react to the ongoing success of this team and it's really about kyle shanahan as much as um, the celebrated coaches around the league, and I understand what he doesn't have um, in his treasure chest just yet, but he's gotten close a couple of times, has Shanny. Brock Purdy is good, but you have to put the asterisk on it. Would he be good in any NFL situation? No, that's the the problem. Your eyes aren't lying to you. You can just drop them in um, and say, hey, go do what Lamar Jackson's doing in Baltimore. That probably wouldn't go very well. But in this situation with what Kyle Shanahan and all his disciples want you to do, which is get rid of the ball real fast, get rid of, make a quick decision and get rid of the ball to negate the offensive line. They don't have a great offensive line, generally speaking, the Niners. It just seems that way because of what Kyle Shanahan has solved about the game of football. They're a good team. I just like the Rams quite a bit. And in good health, I will once again say, and by the way, Shani tends to own McVay, so that's a major problem with my pick here. Still, those twin pass catchers plus the twin uh, ball carriers that Sean McVay has, the offensive line, the tackles are an issue, but it is a strength for the team. Keep Matt Stafford's line of sight clean so that he can deliver the ball to those great pass catchers. I like the Rams a tick better than I do the Niners this year. That's why the Niners drop all the way down to the wild card. Number five. Number five. Okay. Now I'm going to do five, six. Then you just do six. Then I'll do my seven. Then you do your seven. Okay. Cause that's, 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 I don't know good. why, but okay. That'll be because it's fun. Start okay. I'll, 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 I'll decide if it's fun. Go ahead. Okay. All right. All right. I I'll just see how it goes. We're doing. Don't talk okay. back to me. All right, so I basically our, our Niners Rams one two flip flop is like it's so close. We're talking about we're talking about one play at the goal line because I I have the Rams at at as my um, first wild card team, and you know what's just wild about like as a Patriot fan, you know. Drafting wide receivers has just been a horror for the Patriots. You know, uh, Nikhil Harry just kind of sums it up. Like that's, it's like, it's just been a series of whiffs. You know, you get a, a Dion branch once every 20 years, but it's been a lot State of taxes, uh, a lot of Taekwon Thornton. But anyway, so now you look at the Rams and you're like, okay, with the 69 pick, we're going to take this guy out of Eastern Washington, Cooper cup. He was unguardable at Eastern Washington. Does is that going to transfer to the NFL? Is, is are, are the guys Eastern Washington was playing going to be as good as NFL corners and nickelbacks? It doesn't matter. No one can cover him. It's a it, he's a once in a generation talent. Uh, you know, offensive player of the year as a, as a wideout, and then with the hundred and seventy seventh pick in the fifth round. They freaking do it again. I mean, Puka Nakua, this, this idea that you got to guard both those guys now and 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 Stafford's still slinging it. It's it's just nuts that they, with another mid to late round pick that they what found. What the hell happened guy. here? They say the same shine that the Patriots get for, well, hey, they took Tom Brady. That was a savvy move. They took him in the sixth round. It wasn't that smart. Um, what happened with the draft process? That's, I'm, I'm talking to you, Daniel Jeremiah, or anybody. Wait, 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 wait. How did Puka Nakua just collectively fall through? The name alone should have made him a first round pick. Puka Nakua! Yeah, and it wasn't like, you I know. I don't get it. Remember, it's really uh, weird. I mean, Spaghetti will obviously remember this, but I think it was like, you know, you know, Victor Cruz was like, 
uh, on the bubble. And then he had that huge preseason game, but like he had to like play his way into the NFL and then was, but was he was sport. little. So at least but you can say like, wow, look at him. He's not big receiver, enough. Like, Puka Nakua arrived and he's like, hey, I'm dominating everyone. I had 12 catches. Now I have 10. Ca-. Like nobody could cover him from. Yeah. So you're like 176 better players in that draft. Everybody whiffs on this guy multiple times. There's no tape of him getting open constantly. Anyway, so I, I, I'm with you on the Rams. I didn't have the guts to have them win the division, but I but I do have them uh, in the playoffs at five and then six. So you you have the Eagles. Winning the division, I, I'm not ready to throw dirt on Sirianni quite yet. I do have them making the playoffs with a wild card. They have this insane statistic. Like, it's it's I, this has never happened in NFL history. There's no way. They go all the way to the Super Bowl, almost win the Super Bowl, lose to the Chiefs, as because the Chiefs always have to get every single thing has to happen to go their way to win to win the Super Bowl. Uh, it's the law. It's the law. Zay Flowers, the referees, everybody has to accommodate the Chiefs to make sure the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Fantastic. Mission accomplished. Jalen Hurts is going to put the ball on the ground so the Chiefs get a free touchdown and then win by a field goal. Great. This okay. is ugly stuff but, from a Patriots fan. It, it just drives me people. nuts. It just drives me nuts. Anyway, so Jamal Agnews going into the end zone at the five-yard line untouched against the Chiefs. The Jags are going to beat them. Uh, uh, he drops the ball. The Browns are going to beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. Sky stretches out for the pilot up. That's the Chiefs ball at the 20. It's like if you put together a montage of everything that has had to happen for the Chiefs to win those Super Bowls, it's it's insane. Anyway. Let me see if I can Eagles, talk those memories away somewhere and uh, the Eagles, dig them up. The Eagles – are, are coming in a, a field goal, winning the, the Super Bowl. Then they start last season 10 and one. So over a 31 game stretch, they're 26 and five. If you said, hey man, I bet this team loses six of their next seven. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? They've lost five of their last 31. Yeah, they're going to lose six of their next seven. And Did they go on a bow the, ride together or something? What could have happened getting, here, right? They're going to get destroyed by the Buccaneers in the kind of game where you go, oh, they have completely abandoned the coaching staff. Like, this is this is a teardown. This is like nobody can come back. No, Nobody's invited back. And so I, I'm just like, so you're, here we are. Are, are, is Sirianni and Hurts and, and that offense with Saquon Barkley – are they the 26 and five Eagles or are they the one and six Eagles? And I think the answer is somewhere in between, obviously. And I think that somewhere in between is 10 and seven uh, and, and the wild card um, out of that division. Uh, but, you know, if, if they go nine and eight and miss the playoffs, that's it for Mr. Sirianni. Oh yeah. I think that's definitely right. Um, he's definitely one of those people I, I, you know, that you would definitely rightly call on the hot seat. I I could see it coming to a head and him being gone before the season. He He's definitely in play for first coach out. Um, I'll go at number six. I'll stay in green here and I'm going to go with the Packers. Their season win total is nine and a half. I like them at plus 220 to get the wild card. I already told you the Lions are winning the division. I think the Lions on a piece of paper look better. Obviously, Jordan Love gives them an advantage at the most important position, um, like the coaching staff, like what's going on up in Green Bay quite a bit. I don't like the rest of the division that they have to play six games against. Um, that's a real good division. It's a little bit easier, I think. I don't think Sam Darnold ends up being a better fit for O'Connell and then J.J. McCarthy was going to be. Um, but I do trust that O'Connell is one of those um, offensive whizzes that's going to make the Vikes offense a little bit better than it might appear to be uh, when you look at it on a piece of paper. Um so, yes, so the Packers are good. They're getting into the playoffs, and I know that only leaves a little bit of room left for um, all those teams trying to catch up to them there. Well, staying in your garage, Sheck, uh, I like the Packers as my seventh and final team to make the playoffs in the NFC. I wish I had the guts to pick Arizona. I love the way they play for Cannon. I actually think they're going to be competitive. I checked the schedule. I couldn't get there. 
The schedule's pretty brutal for a team that didn't do well last year. But the Packers did do well last year. Uh, in addition to Jordan Love strafing the Cowboys and throwing to guys that were so open, you didn't think the Cowboys had 11 guys on the field. You're like, blown coverage was the guy, was nobody was in the hemisphere of Packer receivers in that game. But then the Packers should have beaten the Niners in the rain. That was another Houdini escape for the for the Niners. Uh, and, I, and I really like Jordan Love. And, and, and you know, it's interesting when you look at the high end receivers that these that these other teams have, like like St. Brown, like C.D. Lamb. Um, the I like, in a way, what Jordan Love has been forced to do with mm-hmm. all of those receivers for the Packers, where you're like, well, Watson's out again this week. Who steps up? So it's like Dobbs, Reed, Watson, like he doesn't really care. And he's not trying to wedge the ball into his guy. He's like, you know who the number one receiver is? Whoever's open. And there have been a lot of open receivers for him. And he's delivering the ball. So, so I like them to return to the playoffs. And I do think, you know, Josh Jacobs had such a down year last year. And I think part of that had to be not taking the passing game seriously. Right. I mean, if, if he's going to have a a, a little resurrection, um, you know, get, you know, he went from 4.9 yards a carry to 3.5. I think he's going to have a little more running room in green Bay. So I like them to get that last spot. Yeah. Lose the fail safe and AJ Dillon. Um, Obviously that's uh, not small news. For Green Bay, yeah, I agree with uh, pretty much everything you just said there um, about what, what what there is to like about them. Good quarterbacks, even ones that just kind of sort of made the scene, tend to have their team in playoff contention, whether you like that or not. That's the cheat code to playoff relevance, at least, is to have the guy at quarterback. Jordan Love does feel that way, and like we've talked about before, he also, uh, it, it suits that receiving core in Green Bay, the way he comports himself as a quarterback. He is not that kind of 20th century type A personality that you usually see at quarterback. He feels like just one of the guys. Like, I, I don't know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wag my finger at you and tisk tisk when the cameras are on me or anything. The vibe is nice in that regard in Green Bay. I think they ride it to another wild card spot. And that brings me to number seven. Right? I'm going number seven here. This is it. You're out. You're out. You're out. You're out. Right. That's a, dude, you this gave your number it. seven. I do want to say it's got to be the cow- it's, it's 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 got to be the Cowboys, right? Well, the Cardinal. Well, listen. I just want to say I thought the Cardinals. I, I gave them a real good long hard look there. We talked about how tough the NFC West is. I gave a good long hard look to the Seattle Seahawks as well. I think we just think we know what the Seahawks are. Keep in mind. After many, 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 many moons, Pete Carroll has moved on. Now there's a young, bright-eyed defensive whiz who's replaced the former defensive whiz, Pete Carroll. Mike McDonald has arrived. He's bringing that scheme with him. Geno Smith, a little underrated based on how things looked last year. I like the Seahawks quite a bit. At number seven, though, like you say, you got to put him in there. And I'm going with the Chicago Bears. I'm sorry, America's team, aka Dallas Cowboys. No playoffs for you. They're going under nine and a half, plus 105 is your reward for betting it the right way there. The Bears, in the meantime, their win total for the season is at plus 105 as well. Don't love that. I think they could land right on that. That will be enough for them to get the wild card. Here's a weird little play for you, though. The, the, Bears are to make the playoffs even money, but to get the wild, get a wild card in the conference, they're plus 260. What are the bookmakers doing here? I think there's a little uh, crack in the system here. The Bears aren't winning the division, right? They're not going to jump all they, they're, I obviously think they're going to be much improved. I don't think they're going to jump all the way past the Lions. And the Packers and even the Vikings. I mean, like, what are we talking about? What an advantage that is. If you like them to make the play, it's a reach to put the Chicago Bears into the playoffs this year in Caleb Williams' rookie season. 
But if you like that, if you're optimistic about where the team is tracking, and by the way, the defense should be good. And I know everybody keeps talking about the fantasy, the pieces they have out there, but look at the pieces they have out there. Boy, you want those guys on your fantasy team. And DeAndre Swift, it, it there's an implied knock on him because of what an upgrade Saquon is in Philly. DeAndre Swift it, ain't no ham and egg or himself if he can just be healthy out there. And overreacting to the preseason. I don't give a good goddamn about what happened in the preseason. Um, I care about Caleb Williams and the specimen that he is. And in that situation, I wouldn't say drop him into New England and watch him take off from day one. But the way he's positioned to succeed right out of the gate in Chicago, I think he will. Nine wins, maybe 10. The wild card is where it's at. Plus 260 is your payout there. And again, I'm not uh, knocking the Cowboys just to be a hater. Again, the vibes are off. I don't love that offensive line, which was for a lot of seasons in the last decade or so, the position of strength for them. C.D. Lamb is great, but the amount of offense that you must drive through him to succeed is a lot. He ain't a big, sturdy guy. I like Jake Ferguson, plenty, all that. But um, the Cowboys on a piece of paper don't stack up to me with the Eagles. And like I say, I think the Giants and Washington are a little bit better, at least, than people anticipate them to be. That's going to knock both the Eagles and Cowboys down and the Cowboys straight out of the playoffs. And that's that. There we have it. Me and Hench's seeds. But now, Eddie Spaghetti. Throw your plate against the wall. Let's see what you got here. Geez, I thought I was going to be uh, have the hot take here with one of my division winners, but check. You're going with the Bears and the Rams winning the division. That's a the that's hot fun. take artist. Here it is. Fun. What it's about fun. the Falcons? I, also, I want to be right. That is. That's. I. I don't hate that, and I'll get to that. But I'll start from my number one here. My number one, number two. I almost flipped them. Um, I think that these two teams I'm going to talk about have been kind of not forgotten, but like you guys were mentioning, uh, people are kind of souring on them. I have the Niners uh, being the number one overall seed. I just think, Sheck, you mentioned it. The coaching of Kyle Shanahan to me is very, very, very important. I don't care about Trent Williams. I don't care about Brandon Ayuk. They will be back. They're not going to skip game checks like they said. Like they, they will be back in that team and I think that John Lynch is an aggressive GM which is very helpful for them we saw him even though he totally whiffed on Trey Lance he made the move he went up and tried to get him he got Christian McCaffrey midseason so you have Brock Purdy who was an MVP candidate last year you have Christian McCaffrey who was an MVP candidate last year right off the bat that's great you will get back Ayuk and I think Debo Samuel is a guy that like went healthy he's probably the player in the league I want on my team like the most in terms of like an offensive weapon because he could just kind of do everything and then adding Ricky Pearsall in the draft just giving a young Brock Purdy more weapons is something I like that defense is still going to be rock solid. It is a tough division, the NFC West, but they've been there, done that. And this kind of like reminds me of this Niners season. It's I guess, spoiler, I, I do have them winning the Super Bowl. Uh, this reminds me of like one of those, you see it a lot in the NHL with the, the year that you think the team is going to ascend and win it and they don't. And they're like, oh, they're going to come back down to earth. And then they, they somehow like quietly navigate it and they end up winning it all. I think this I, I Lynch and Shanahan know that like they're near the end of the window here and they have to get it done. I think they will. Uh, um, they will they will put you know all their cards all the chips in the middle of the table so i like the niners a lot the team i almost had i mean, i'm not I, I don't think you're crazy with any of that i mm -hmm. i also submit that if ricky pearsall hadn't gotten hurt at the start of training camp brandon Ayuk would already be on the pittsburgh steelers and guess what i think that's still gonna happen it just doesn't add up they under they know and i get tag and all that and his Ayuk. really it's about you really gonna sit out what could be a special season, Brandon? You're really going to miss that, man? It's not good for your career to show you're not committed to the team. You're really going to sit on the sidelines in this critical year for your team? I think Ayuk's going to get dealt. I mean, they signed Juwan Jennings, too. That that, that That's also, they didn't just draft uh, Pearsall. They also paid their third wide receiver. You don't do that if you also think, yeah, we're going to keep Ayuk in the fold long term. Um I think they, they kind of have to deal him with the looming deal for Brock Purdy on the other side of this season. So that's I, uh, my hot take, which and it may have gone down by the time we finish this show. Well, I was just going to say, um, as a recording, I know, like, uh, I believe Schefter said on on McAfee that uh, not only the commanders pull out of the trade negotiations, but the Browns offered the most amount of money for Ayuk, and he still said no. Uh, obviously, your Steelers have an offer in place. It just, it, to me, it just reeks. So Ayuk wants to go stay in the Bay Area, but just for a, a higher price tag, and John Lynch, uh, 
uh, had a press conference yesterday and he basically is now getting like angry about it. So I, I think when push comes to shove, he will end up saying it because, you know, it's, it's the best situation uh, for him. The team I almost had the number one overall seed. And again, people are kind of souring on them, but um, the Eagles will win the NFC East and they will have, I think they're going to be close to 12, 13 wins. I think they're going to be super dominant. Uh, I don't care about Nick Sirianna being a buffoon. Uh, I just think Jalen Hurts, like we, we've seen Jalen Hurts go through so much adversity in college and then he goes and loses the Super Bowl and people got the images of him losing like the 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 confetti falling. It was like his, his phone background. And then he was, you know, this offseason, one of the major stories was him reaching out to Wink Martindale about how to like how do people attack their offense. And I yes, they lost Jason Kelsey, but their offensive line, like they added Mackay Beckton at right guard when he used to be left tackle, like like big, big dudes in the offensive line. Adding Saquon Barkley, who I know you were talking up uh, uh, Swift before, but they're just different animals. I mean, uh, like Saquon never had an offensive line nearly as good as this. And no offense to Andrew Thomas, but he was the only guy uh, on the Giants where like Saquon, his uh, best ability outside of being a good blocker and a good receiver is he could take that that run that has no no there's no gap. There's no lane. And all of a sudden he makes a guy miss and he's taken to the house. A lot of running backs don't have that. And he's adding that to the offense. They go, why on God's name did the, the commanders trade Jahan Dodd? to this team having such great receiver depth they drafted Johnny Wilson too um, I, I just like the Eagles offense the defense full of those Georgia Bulldogs uh, great depth they bring in Bryce Huff uh, gra- drafted Cooper DeJohn who's one of the better cornerbacks in this draft like I, I just think that this this team uh, people are kind of sleeping on them and I think how bad the Giants and the Commanders will be and I, I am kind of souring on the the Cowboys I think there's enough in-division wins that's going to propel them uh, number three here really no surprise the Falcons uh, I think they're going to easily win the NFC South not much of a debate really here could Baker have some magic and and push them again? Maybe, um, you know, he had a pretty good season last year, but I think the Falcons made some nice additions to their defense. Their offense should be good. Kirk Cousins, as long as he's playing like those like one o'clock, not nationally televised games, he's going <laughs> to cruise, you know, 30 plus, 35 plus touchdowns. Um, Nobody it, watch. It will be great. In that dome, I, I think it's great for a great situation for for Kirk. Um, and this is my hot take here. Um, you guys both had the Lions. I am going with the Green Bay Packers, the four seed, to win the NFC North. And my simple reason is I just believe that Jordan Love is going to ascend to an MVP type quarterback. The guy's 25 years old, has like perfect frame for a quarterback. He's 6'4, 220. He's mobile. He can move when he has to, but he's not going to be dumb about it and run and get injured. Uh, hence, you were mentioning like how he spreads it around. It's very Rogers esque. Like they're not going to put a lot of money into the offense in terms of the pass catchers, but he finds a way to get it to, to all these guys who are, you know, kind of unheralded. Uh, I think Josh Jacobs does have a nice rebound here. They brought in Xavier McKinney from my giants. So he'll help the back end along with Jair Alexander. I like a lot about the, this Packers team, but doesn't mean I hate the lions because the Lions are my five seed. I just think that uh, the MVP type play of Jordan level kind of push him again. He had 32 touchdown passes last year, like almost what he had like 4,200 passing yards. I, I think he's going to eclipse that. I, I just really am a huge fan of his and um, the, the Lions love another fine season. And again, these, both these, teams are very very close uh to beating the Niners so uh, I think they are they're going to be the mainstays in the NFC playoffs for, for quite a while uh the Rams I have at the sixth seed they're just not going to beat the the Niners to get that the top overall seed in that division it's a tough division um you know losing Aaron Donald who's one of the best players in NFL history is going to be tough no matter what they just traded Jones their linebacker so I don't love those moves I also think this is a boneheaded move by Sean McVay to tell Kyron Williams that he is the punt returner and the kick returner why why in God's name is your starting running back who had a phenomenal season returning kicks for you? It is so stupid. Uh, I think it will cost them a game or two of him not like being uh, unhealthy. I mean, they brought in Blake Corn, which is fine. I disagree. But- I disagree. And because we talked about it the day that they in- installed that new kickoff rule, I think that they're the teams. I I, I don't know how it's going to go, but my guess is that the teams that have been smart enough to be like. We need a moose back there because the the tight quarters of the guys chasing that guy are going to like if, if you break a tackle in that premise, I, I don't know how it's going to go, but I, I'm intrigued to see. I think that if you bust a tackle like you, there's not going to be the same there, kickoff coverage is not going to come at you in layers anymore. So if you can get through that first line, that's the only line as far as I can tell. I just don't think so I when love you, a running back back there. 
when you find when you find a special player and every down back and you're going to put them out there for extra snaps when their shelf life is already limited. I just don't agree with that. I would never do that. And I, I think if you tell like, you know, the Rams team, you're going to have Kyron for the full 17 game slate or you're only going to play 10 games because you put them out on special teams. I think we all know which side they're going to pick with. Um, so I, I don't like that move. And I, I just think this division isn't there's no easy games in this one. And then for my last seed, I, I do respect the Bears pick. I think that division is too tough. So the same thing about the NFC West, the South, again, could Baker do it? Maybe I hate this. I don't want to put this team here because I, I don't really believe in them. I think there's a lot of injuries and players they lost. And I think the <laughs> running back room is terrible, but just based on having four games, which will be four wins because the giants haven't beaten the Cowboys since like the Ford administration and having the commanders who I don't buy uh, whatsoever, especially the rookie quarterback, the Cowboys are going to win, you know, nine games or so, and they're going to make the wild card. Um, I, I think purely because the DAC to CB lamb connection, uh, you, I think lamb will have the best uh, statistical like stats for a, um, uh, a receiver this upcoming year. And Dak obviously is playing for a contract. So that alone will do it, but the offensive lines kind of in shambles and, and I, I just don't like a lot about this makeup of this roster. Jerry Jones is not making things easy for any player there. I feel like they're walking on eggshells. That does matter. Um, so, but they'll slip in the playoffs, but I, they're not going to be a very good team this year. Spaghetti and I have the exact same seven teams, only Shaq bringing a little interest with the Bears. Um, let me hear your guys' Super Bowl champs if I haven't heard it already. I, I'm going to need spoiled the it. I said Niners. I said Niners. I spoiled Niners. It. Okay, right. Niners. Yeah. And I, I said Lions. Shaq. I can't issue my, I can't issue my final Super Bowl pick until we are on the eve of kickoff. I, I, I won't do it. Okay, I'm not well, going to be pressured by Niners Jets. I, Remember the hard knocks last year where the, they had the magician and they said Niners Jets Super Bowl. Rogers got hurt, ruined that. I'm pretty high in the Jets. I'm going to go Niners Jets. There I'm going go. Lions over the Ravens, but we know who it's not going to be since there was only one person on this uh, pod who didn't pick the Steelers to make the playoffs. So hey, no I told you, I'm, you. I, I'm rooting for the Jerry Orbach effect here. Maybe that, you know what? I am a jockey who understands jockey or whip. And maybe right now I'm just trying to light a little fire under my fellas. That's all. You okay. don't know what I'm, you don't know what I'm up to. 